Yo, what's up, good people? How are you guys doing? I hope you're having a nice Thursday, wherever you are. Please don't get wasted tonight. You guys have to go to work tomorrow. There will be free time in the weekend. So this is Spanish Grandmaster Pepe Cuenca, and I welcome you to the game of the day of round number two of the Grand Chess Tour of Croatia. And today I bring you a classic, like a Nadal versus Federer in tennis, or Madrid versus Barcelona in football. I bring you a Carlsen against Bishan and Carlsen, the world champion, Bishan and the Tiger of Madras, ex-world champion, one of the best chess players in the world. So let's cut the bullshit, right, and see what happened in the 64 squares in this fantastic game. So Magnus decided to go for d4, knight f6 by Bishan and c4 and e6. Nowadays, a lot of top players use this order with the black pieces in order to go from the Nimzo Indi, Nimzo Indian, sorry, after knight c3. They go bishop b4, the Nimzo India is one of the most solid defenses in chess. So you want to avoid the Nimzo India, you go knight f3, and this is what Magnus Carlsen did. Here there's a lot of alternatives available for black in this position. Bishan went for d5, entering in uh, Queen's Gambit type positions. But you can also play after knight f3, you can also play bishop b4 check, uh, going for the Bogo India, or b6 here, the Queen's uh, Indian, or you can go c5, going for the Benoni, but as, as we said, uh, Bishanan went for d5. Here are two main moves, you can go g3, going for the Catalan, or you can go knight c3, as Magnus Carlsen did. Again, a lot of alternatives here. Uh, uh, interesting for black here. You can go bishop b4, the goes in variation, you can go with c5 entering in the tarash or semi tarash defenses, or uh, you can go bishop e7 of course, and Bishian and went for d c4 entering in the Vienna defense. You guys can check the video series from Jan Gustafsson in chess 24. This is one of the most complicated defenses in chess. I get nothing, I understand nothing uh, in this opening. You will see how complicated is this. So try to focus for this game. So here the main uh, line goes after e4, of course now uh, white is intending to recapture on c4 and if black does nothing, white will be just much better because you got uh, better development and you got more space in the center. So here that's why black goes bishop d4, developing a minor piece and putting some pressure on c3 and, and directly on e4. Again, two main moves here, bishop c g5 as Magnus Carlsen did, or also bishop c4 and this is actually a pawn sacrifice after knight takes e4, short castle, knight c3, b takes c3. It's well known that taking the second pawn is never a good business. So that's why normally black players, they go to d6 or e7. And this is a really complicated line where white has sacrificed a pawn, but you have a lot of counterplay in return. So uh, after bishop b4, the other main line goes after bishop g5. And this is what, what Magnus played in the game. And here... Uh, the black player Bishiana went for c5, one of the main moves. And again, some of you uh, at home will be asking, come on, stupid Spanish guy, is not uh, white winning uh, directly with e5 just winning a piece on the spot? Well, black can take on d4, and let's say e takes f6, g takes f6, and bishop h4. And here, after knight c6, black has. Uh, a very good play, three pawns for the sacrifice piece. And if you want to learn more about this, you actually can check. Uh, Jan's video series uh, uh, of the Vienna in Chess 24. So after c5, uh, white takes on c4, c takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes c3 by Bishian and uh, ruining uh, white pawn structure on the queen side, b takes e3 and queen a5 with a double attack on the bishop on g5 and on the pawn on c3. And here there are different alternatives, very interesting for the white player here. Magnus Carlsen went for bishop b5 check. But also, it's very interesting to go bishop f6 here in this position. Let's say queen takes c3, intermediate move, king f1, and g takes f6. You can't mm, really take both pieces, queen takes c4, king g1, and you can't take this second piece because there is rook c1, and then boom, this bishop is hanging, and then this rook will also fall, so black will lose the game. So let's say after queen c3, king f1, gf6, uh, let's say rook c1, queen a5, this is a really uh, complicated line after h4. Normally, white wants to bring this rook to the action by a h3. This game is uh, pretty well hidden on g1, and then white has a lot of counterplay for the uh, sacrifice pawn. Look at all these pieces here. Looks, uh, it looks like they were bullied in high school, right? And normally, Tommy used to uh, take their sandwiches in the free time, in the break, right? So. Let's say 
uh, bishop f f6 is a really interesting option bishop b5 and also bishop d2 actually magnus Carlsen played uh, bishop d2 against levon aronian just a uh, few weeks ago a few months ago in a really interesting game that he managed to win this is a really crazy line mm, levon aronian didn't uh, go for the critical line that continues after knight takes e4 let's say queen g4 give me that baby give me that baby uh, don't take me and then king d2 and this is a really crazy line the engine says it's around equal but both kings are naked like looks like this is a, I, don't, I don't know everybody's naked here this is like a german sauna you guys have gone to to the german sauna first time i, I was living in germany for four years and i i went there to do my phd in applied mathematics in hamburg <laughs> And first time I went to the sauna, I couldn't believe it. Everybody was naked, you know, so I, I didn't know what to do, you know. Like, it was full of uh, 70 years old guys there, and I was pretty, and girls, and it was pretty strange for me. Yeah. So you guys should know that. I love Germany, by the way. Such a nice country, such a, such a nice people, and good opportunities for work. So, uh, all right, let's keep going, right? Um, queen e5, bishop e5 check, and here are two options, knight d7 or bishop d7, bishop d7 was played by Bishi Annan, um, bishop f6 by Magnus, everything is preparation, jet, so gf, bishop takes, knight takes, and short castle here. And the main line goes after a6, in this position, a6, rook b1, queen c7, queen h5, etc, 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 but here Bishi Annan took on c3, Bishi Annan normally is extremely well prepared in all these lines. This is a really risky move because, of course, you are not uh, given some free tempi for the white players. In this position, rook b1, rook c1, everything is possible, even knight b5, but queen a4 is uh, one of uh, the main moves here. Only 10, 15 games uh, from top players uh, in my database in this position, but queen a4, of course, is putting some pressure on this knight and looks like black can't castle. Uh, castle, sorry, but actually black shoot castle, and this is what uh, Bishiana did. Let's try to explain why. Looks like, come on, this uh, knight is hanging. Give me that baby. Well, after queen takes e7, you can just move the rook to d8, and then you're gonna get this knight back, and then uh, position is completely equal. So that's why Magnus Carlsen took on e6, saying, you know what? If you take back on e6, I'm gonna take now this knight on d7, and let's say after queen c6, protecting two weaknesses, I go back to d4. Putting pressure on f6 on a7, what means that actually black can't uh, bring a rook to d8. And uh, what is better here? You're gonna bring these rooks to c1, to d1. There are a lot of maneuvers related uh, uh, with attacking the black king, bringing the rook to the third five. So that's why after knight a6, uh, black plays knight b6. And looks like black's winning, right? And attacking the queen and attacking the knight. What should I do here with the white pieces? Well, there's only one good move, and this queen d4, saving the day. Of course, everything is preparation jet. Rook fc8, queen takes e3, rook takes e3, and we reach this extremely interesting endgame. Two games in my database. One uh, game from top players. And here, let's try to analyze. So rook c5, of course, uh, white has a nicer structure, right? Uh, you got uh, two uh, islands, and then uh, black has three uh, islands of pawns, right? And rook c5 has a really uh, natural purpose. You want to undouble uh, pawns by exchanging the f pawn for the e pawn. Okay, uh, we got uh, Facundo twins in the positions, but you know, for the first time in chess history, it's good to remove one of the Facundos. Here in the two games that were played in this position, both players went for g4. This is actually a really interesting move because you stop f5 and then you're threatening to go knight h5, putting pressure on f6. In those two games, the black players, they went for king f8, knight h5, king e7, and knight g3, and that game ended in a draw. So Magnus Carlsen plays a novelty, and he goes for rook f to d1. This is a really natural move as well, and here Bishi Annan finally goes for f5, managing to exchange this bad pawn on f6. He takes f5 and rook ac8. There's no hurry actually to take this pawn, it's just impossible to protect, to protect that guy with g4, because after g4, rook c4 and then white could be even in trouble see, if uh, the g4 pawn uh, falls right so after rook a c8 f6 was played rook f5 g3 rook f6 and we reach this endgame and i really love the way magnus carlsen is playing from this point 
He's playing almost like an Alpha Zero, like Stockfish in every move. He uh, brings his uh, screwdriver to uh, the chessboard, you know, and he starts, you know, putting pressure on Bishianan's shoulder, you know, and the leg, you know, and starts playing with Bishianan. And it's just uh, extremely amazing how he manages to uh, use uh, really small advantages in, in this kind of position. So. All right, so rook d3 was played by Magnus, rook fc6, and then rook d3. I really like this move. Looks silly, right? But the point is, you want to uh, unstabilize, unstabilize? I don't know, unstabilize, <laughs> let's say that, uh, the knight on b6, uh, right? Because now there's no support from the a7 pawn. Now after rook b3, black's gonna be in trouble. The knight on b6 and the pawn on b7. That's why after rook a3, Bishanan decided to go for rook c1, takes, takes, king g2, and knight c8. So now uh, that Carlsen has managed to exchange one pair of rooks, he goes back to d3 and then he's intent to go to the 7th rank and put pressure in all those guides. That's why Bishianan goes back to c7 to stop rook d7, but then rook d8, king g7 and h4 starts with a pawn march on the king's hand. There is 3 versus 2 and a weak king. There is also one check on h5 which it's going to be used very soon by Magnus Carlsen. So knight e7 was played by Bishianen trying to improve his minor piece. Knight h5 and king h6 was played by Bishianen. Here knight f6 was played by Magnus Carlsen improving the position of this knight. There is g4, g5 ideas coming. So that's why king g6 was played and here Magnus uh, has achieved something because of the 98 uh, this rook has to go from the seventh rank and actually after rook c6 there are also a lot of g4 and rook d6 ideas this king is in real danger so that's why he goes to c6 there's rook d7 and there is a lot of pressure now in all those three guys so looks like magnus Carlsen is almost winning a pawn you know but a pawn is not a one game so let's see so rook e6 now this is a really credible move from Bishiana. magnus went for h5 in this position if you take the pawn straight away on b7 there's this re really good move knight c8 attacking this knight all is square available is c7 after rook e7 this knight is pink and then black uh, has almost managed to to equalize this position so that's why Magnus went for h5 here saying, you know what, you can take that pawn for free. If you take that pawn for free, boom, who's your daddy? Knight g7 and knight e6 and what wins on the spot? So that's why after h5, black had to go to h6 and then Magnus went for knight d6. More pressure. Now that you have removed the king from the defense of f7, now you're double attacking f7 and b7. So f5 was played by Bishian and the f pawn Facundo is the most important pawn, is the most important piece in chess, even more than the queen. So knight takes b7 and knight g8. Now a uh, white threat is to go to c5 and then black can protect these two pieces at the same time. So that's why knight g8 was played. Knight d6 attacking f5, knight f6, knight f5, king, h, king g5. You can't really take on h5 jet because there is knight g7 so king g5 knight d4 and they exchange rooks and then we reach this end game which is which looks almost winning for magnus Carlsen, right he is a pawn up a clear pawn up but you're gonna see how difficult is chess so he has played perfectly during 40 moves like stockfish like alpha zero like whatever zero like ronaldinho zero right but it's never easy in this extremely, oh, it's a nightmare, this chess. You know, man, you do everything perfect and then you you just mess it up in one move and then you go crying to your hotel room and then you just want to disappear from the wall. So king f3 by Magnus, normal, king g6, king f4, natural move, king f6, knight g5, attacking h7, h6, knight e4, and here Bishianan does a really clever thing. He provokes Magnus of going king g4. And it looks like the most natural move, of course, like, looks like this king is abandoning the h6 pawn, so you just want to go and grab it. And then if this king tries to activate himself, you just protect the knight on e4 with Facundo, and then this pawn is going to fall. But actually, this is what Anand uh, wanted to do. He provokes Magnus. Looks like knight c3 was a better move, stopping knight, uh, king d5 and king e5 ideas. And um, looks like the position uh, is really tasty for the white player still. A lot of work to do. 
but after king g4, Bishiannon finds a fantastic counterplay. King e5, f3, king g4, king f5, and this is Bishiannon's idea. He wants to go from behind, um, like a traitor, right? So king e3, attacking f3, f4, and h5. Now it's not easy to proceed for Magnus Carlsen. So uh, if you go knight f6, you can just take on f6, and then this end game is actually a draw. So you both uh, promote, and this is just a dead draw. So that's why I'm going to strike with knight g5, knight c5, king g6, and king f2. And you know what? Uh, Bishianan is thinking, all right, so these pawns are going to disappear off the board, and then I'm going to try to sacrifice this knight uh, uh, for this pawn, and then your king is so far away that I will be able to capture this a pawn, uh, and then we'll make a draw. And this is what actually happened in the game. So f5, king g3, knight e6. If you go f6, you can always go knight g7, and after f7, you can't really promote, and then you have also this knight e5, knight f7 ideas. So f7, sorry, knight e6 was played by Magnus Carlsen, knight d7, king h5, and White's a pawn up, and you have a pass pawn, but it's not enough. And king e4, knight c7, a5, knight b5, king d3, king g6, a4, king f7, and now you go from behind again, knight f3, and then this is just a dead draw. Knight g5, looks like with this move, uh, white has some chances, but uh, because there's knight d4 and knight e6 check, but Anan really, uh, he saw a really uh, beautiful way of making a draw. So knight d4, king b2, knight e6, only move knight f7. Looks like after f7 and knight g5, white is winning. But actually, black is in time to promote as well, sacrificing a knight. a3 takes king b1, f, queen f8, a2, and this is actually a dead draw. Why? Of course, you guys know that this end game without the knight is a draw. Because whenever there is a check, you can always hide on the corner and then you are threatening stalemate and then you can really uh, never bring the king. And uh, with this knight so far away, it's still a draw. Okay, they kept playing a little bit more because of course you can allow black to promote and then play queen and knight versus queen, but this is just a dead draw. And uh, Carlsen really offered a really nice way of making a draw, sacrificing the queen with king d4, sorry, king e5. Check. Queen takes, knight f6, and knight takes e7. How difficult is chess? Magnus has played a fantastic game, maybe just one little mistake, and he uh, didn't manage to win the game. Of course, kudos to Bishianan, who was defending a really tough position for a lot of moves. So this is modern chess, guys, and uh, this is the Grand Chess Tour, uh, round number two. If you guys want to follow the action, you guys know you can follow all the games in Chess24. We're doing Spanish commentary. If you want to come by, you're always welcome uh, to be there. This has been a fantastic pleasure, and I hope to see you tomorrow in the next uh, game, the next game of the day video. Bye-bye. Be good. If you drink, don't drive. You play Blitz on Chess24. Don't drive. Bye-bye, my friends. Sayonara, baby.